Hey, in this Godot 4 tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this low-res forest environment with a campfire, a starry sky, and some trees and foliage that sway a little bit in the wind. And we're going to make this entire scene using free and open source tools like Krita, Lighter, and Blender. So if you don't have any of those tools, I'll have links for them in the description. Make sure you download them, and then you can follow along with me from scratch as I put the scene together. I've got a list of textures that we're going to need in order to make this environment. So open up textures.com, make an account if you don't have one, and then you can follow along and we'll start crossing these off of our list. So I'm going to go to library over here, search for pine needles. This image is going to work just fine. I'll download the smallest option here. And we're going to make our own sort of pine needle texture from that. Then I'll search for pine bark. Pine bark one is going to work just fine. 512 by 512. That's going to be good. And if I search for foliage, um, these 3D models come up. This is not what I'm looking for, but if I add isolated to the search criteria, we start getting these uh, actual images with an alpha background of actual foliage, and this is what I want. And if I scroll down a while, I'll see nature plants 0022. This is the one that I'm going to be using. I'll download the smallest one. And then for the ground, I'll search forest ground. And uh, Force Ground 4 is the option that I like, so I'm going to download the 512 by 512 of that. And then for the sky, if I just search for sky, stars, any of these images are going to work just fine. I'll go for the third one and download the smallest one right there. And then we just need our fire and smoke particles uh, for that effect. And if you just search for the Kenny Particle Pack, uh, this is a great resource here that is completely free to use. So I'll download this. And with that, we've got everything to get started. All right, I've got Krita open now, and we're going to start by making our pine needle texture. So go ahead and click New File. I'm going to make a 1024 by 1024 texture. In content, I'm going to have the background opacity set to 0%, so I'll create that. Here I've got all of the textures that I downloaded before, so I'm going to take that pine needle picture, drag it in here, and insert as new layer. I'll click the Transform tool up here, then I'll hold Shift and left click uh, up in this corner when the rotation symbol there and I'll drag this down and then shift click drag this to be about one fourth the size of this canvas that looks pretty good and just kind of set it right over here then I'll copy control C and then control V paste this layer click this shift to drag it over to the right like that control C control V drag this up like that, just so you're kind of bridging these pine needles together. And then I'm going to left click that layer, shift click this one up here, right click, merge with layer below to put these all together, and I'll left click to select everything, control C, control V again, and then shift drag this up here just so it looks like this, and then enter to place that. And this might look really bad, but <laughs> you'd be surprised what you can uh, get away with. So control alt I, we're going to reduce the resolution of this to 128 by 128, I'll hit OK there. And then we just want to increase the alpha of this texture just a little bit. So uh, I'm going to click both of these layers, right click and merge with layer below again. Then I'm gonna go into filter, adjust and color adjustment curves. And in order to increase the alpha here, click channel and go to alpha, and then click anywhere on this curve, just drag up a little bit. And that already looks a lot better. So I'll hit OK. And then I will Control Shift S to save this as, uh, let's see, what do I want to call this? I'll call this Pine Needles.png. All right, there are pine needles. All right, so now we're going to take care of our foliage texture. So again, out of those pictures that I downloaded, I'm going to drag in that foliage image. And first, we're going to expand this canvas out a little bit so that it's a square. So I'll hit Control Alt and C. I'll take this 944 and turn it to 1024 so that it's a square just like that. All right, then I'm going to scale the whole thing down to 32 by 32 pixels by doing Control Alt I, and I'll just type uh, 32 by 32 into here. Okay, perfect. And now we're going to increase the alpha on this again, just like we did with the pine needles. So I'll go to Filter, Adjust, Color Adjustment Curves for the channel, go to Alpha, then click anywhere here, drag it pretty far over the left. That's pretty good, hit OK. And I don't really like this brown color. I want to make this a little bit more green, so we're going to do the filter one more time. Go to Filter, Adjust. We'll go to HSV Adjustment this time. And if we change the hue, we can see it starts applying different colors. If we drag it just a little bit to the right, it starts kind of adding this green color. That's looking pretty good. 
go ahead and play around with the saturation and lightness a little bit too. Maybe make it a little bit closer to the pine needle color, but this is gonna work just fine. So I'll hit okay. Then I'm gonna hit control shift S and then I'll save this as a foliage.png. All right, and then we are done. We are just gonna take one second to adjust our sky texture. So I'll drag that in right here. And we're just gonna drop this in as our sky texture for Godot uh, as is. But uh, when we do that, it's actually gonna stretch out these top stars a little bit. So in order to solve that, just the simplest way possible, we're just gonna paint over that with a black color. So hold control and left click anywhere in here to select the black color right there. Make sure the brush tool is selected here. Uh, just go to the search bar down here and search basic. And then I'm gonna grab this paintbrush right here, basic five size, that brush right there. You can uh, shift and left click to change the size field up here. And then with make sure the eraser isn't selected and just paint over some of these top stars. And that way they won't show up as like big stretched stars, but you'll still see plenty of the other normal ones. Okay, so shift control S and I'll save this as sky.png. Okay, and we're done with the sky. Next, we're gonna make our two bark textures that we're gonna use in this scene. So I'm gonna start by opening up that bark image that we downloaded and I'll start by going Control Alt I and I'll scale this down to 32 by 32 pixels. And this is perfect for our bark texture that we're gonna put on our tree. So I'll hit Control Shift S, so I'll save this as bark.png. And then we're just going to darken this a little bit. So we've got a burned bark texture that we can use for our campfire. So I'll go to Filter, adjust HSV adjustment, and I'm just gonna drag saturation all the way to left, hit OK. Again, Control Shift S, and I'll call this one bark underscore burned.png, and save that. Okay, and we're done with our bark textures. Okay, we just have to resize a couple more textures in Krita, and then we are gonna be done using this program for this tutorial. So, in the counting particle pack that we downloaded, uh, I'm gonna be using the fire underscore two dot PNG image, as well as the smoke underscore one dot PNG image. So I've just copied those into my root asset folder. So I'll start by opening fire. I'm just gonna press control alt I and resize this one to 32 by 32 pixels. The transparency on this is totally fine. Control Shift S. I'll save it as fire.png. Okay, that's good. And then I'm gonna drag in the smoke image. Same thing, Control Alt I, 32 by 32 pixels. Yep, Control Shift S, smoke.png. All right, and the very last one that we're gonna do is the ground texture that we downloaded. And this one, I am actually gonna make 64 by 64 pixels. And this is gonna be perfect. Control Shift S, ground.png is good. Okay, and we are done with Krita. Okay, I've got Lighter open now, and we are just gonna make a normal map for our ground texture before we hop over to Blender. So I'll go up in the top left here, click this import button and open ground.png. I'll click pixelated up at the top right, tile X and tile Y down here, go over to the second tab, click the tile, neighbors, and then just drop this here and all of these open tiles and X out of that. Go back to the visualization tab, go over to the normal map, click this and make sure the height is dragged down to zero. And then just to make sure it looks okay, I'll go over to preview, drag this around and that looks perfectly fine to me. So I'm gonna export it, normal underscore N, yep, export. Okay, we are done with lighter. Okay, I've got Blender open now, and it's time to start 3D modeling some of our assets. So I'm gonna click this light and shift click this camera X to delete those. I'm gonna press this cube S, shift Z, 0.5, drag it up a little bit, GZ, then just control drag it, GY, and then drag it off a little bit. This is a little bit thinner now, but it's two meters tall, so it's gonna serve as a human reference. And let's start by making our foliage. So shift A, mesh plane right there. I'm gonna go up to the shading tab here. Make sure that that plane is selected. Click this red ball icon down here, new. Let's call this material foliage. And then for the base color, click this and select image texture open. Go to the assets folder where we've got our edited textures now and select foliage.png. I'll open that. Click linear and change that to closest. And then scroll down to the bottom. Let's make the blend mode alpha clip. To make that alpha actually show, uh, click this alpha right here and drag it into that alpha. All right, and then let's lower this specular down to zero. I'm gonna bring the roughness up to one. And this is currently two by two meters, but I'm gonna make this one by one. So I'll just press S 
uh, 0.5 just to scale it. Now let's orient it properly. So RX 90 and then drag it up a half meter so it's on the ground. GZ 0.5. Okay. And we're just going to copy this twice and rotate it around uh, just so it has a little bit more depth. And so to do that, I'm going to do Shift D RZ 120 and then one more time Shift D RZ 120. There we go. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the Layout tab. I'll press Z, go to Material Preview here as well. I'll just control drag over all of those, control J to join them together. And then I'll click it, right click, Set Origin, Origin to 3D Cursor, and we are done with the foliage. All right, let's get started on our tree model. So click the foliage, GX, control drag it over one unit so we've got room for the tree. Shift A, Mesh Cone, go to this Add Cone menu, Vertices, let's say 5. Radius 1 will give it 0.5, and let's give it a depth of 12 meters. GZ, I'll control drag it up to the floor. Tab to go into edit mode, 3 to go into face select mode. I'll click this bottom face, P, and I'll separate this selection. Uh, we're going to use this bottom face to make the pine needles later, but for now we can just ignore it. So uh, I'll go back into object mode and then click just so that the cone is selected. And then I'll go over to the shading mode and let's apply the bark texture. I'm gonna apply this bark texture by duplicating the foliage texture and then uh, swapping out the image. So I'll, I'll click the cone and go to this drop down here and select foliage. And then I'm gonna click this image here for a new material. And then let's rename this bark. And then I'll go down here, click this folder icon and then I'll select bark.png to swap that over. And then I'm gonna go down here, I'll change alpha clip back to opaque for this one. And I'll just disconnect this alpha connection because we don't need that. Now we just need to fix the UV mapping. So I'll go to the UV editing tab, then in here I'll go Z, material preview. Then I'll press A to select all the faces, U, smart UV project, and these defaults should be fine. Press OK, and then I'll scroll in over here on the left side. And I just want to line up this face with the other one, so I'll press L near one of the vertices, S, Y, minus one, and then I'll just click this vertex here, GX, drag it over so it's a little bit more uniform. And then I'm just going to zoom in here. On the left side, I'll press A to select all of these. And I'm just gonna press S and scale up until the pixel size looks about the same as the foliage. Uh, but you can eyeball it, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, this is probably just a little bit bigger, but honestly, it looks pretty good. So uh, I'll call it there. I'm perfectly happy with that. I'll go back over the layout tab. I'm gonna click that face that we separated from this cone earlier, GZ4 to drag it up again. And I'm gonna move these two objects back just so I've got more room to work with again. Okay. I'll click that face, tab into edit mode, A, X, only faces to remove the face, two to go into edge select mode, A, E, and right click to extrude those edges in place. And then S6, enter, and GZ minus three to bring them down. And then I'm gonna alt click this inner loop here, shift S, cursor is selected, and then M at center to merge all those vertices right where that 3D cursor is. Tab back into object mode, right click, set origin, origin to 3D cursor so that the origin is right at the tip here. And let's go ahead and apply the texture now to this. So I'll go back to the shading tab. We're gonna do the same duplicating process that we did for the bark texture. So click this drop down over here and select foliage, then click this icon here for a new material and we'll call this pine underscore needles. Then I'm gonna go over here, click this folder and we're gonna select pine needles.png for there. And uh, it's applied, it's just currently not UV mapped properly. So I'll go to UV editing, hit A, and then I'm gonna hit U, reset here. And on the left side, click UV, constraint to image bounds, box select this bottom left vertex and drag it up to the top left and you can left click. I'll take this top right vertex, drag it down to the bottom left. Then I'll drag the top one again. I'm gonna press GX 0.5 to bring it to the middle there. And this is looking pretty good but right here, I don't like this, so I'm gonna drag this bottom left vertex again, and then GX, just move it in a little bit to take that away, and otherwise, that's looking pretty good. 
All right, the last thing that we have to do to finish up this tree is add an array modifier to these pine needles. So I'm gonna go back to the layout tab, shift A, empty, plane axes, GZ. Let's move it 0.5 units up. I'm also gonna click this bark tab into edit mode, one for vertex select, click the top vertex, shift S, cursor to selected, just so we can see where the top of the tree is a little bit more easily. Tab back into object mode, click the pine leaves, then click this wrench icon down here, add modifier, let's give it an array modifier, uncheck relative offset, and then check object offset and select that empty that we just made. Uh, I'm gonna give this a count of 30, and then I'm gonna click the empty to select it up here, and I'm going to S, Z, and for pretty much all of these adjustments, I'm gonna be holding shift, uh, just so I can tune things a bit more finely. So holding shift, I'll drag it in, kind of make it so that it rests right at the top of the tree there, and then RZ, 45, just to add some rotation, and then S, shift Z, and then drag that in a little bit, and it's a little bit too sharp up here, so I'm gonna S, Z, kind of flatten it up there a little bit more, and then GZ, drag it up so that it is up at the top again. Okay, and that's pretty good. If you want to add a little bit of variation to it, because, you know, this is <laughs> pretty perfect, uh, you can click the pine needles, tab in edit mode, uh, and then you can sort of drag some of these vertices out a little bit, just to make it so that it's a little bit more random a little less perfect. That already makes it just a, just a touch better. Uh, but that is pretty good, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna go over to this modifier and apply it. And then I'll go select the empty, delete that, click uh, the pine needles and the bark, control J to join them, shift S, cursor to world origin, and then right click it and set origin, origin to 3D cursor and we are done with the tree. Okay, the last thing that we need to model is some campfire logs. So I'm gonna click this tree, GUI, I'll drag it out of the way a little bit. Uh, shift A, mesh, cylinder, I'll give it five vertices, a radius of 0.15 meters and depth of 0.66. I'll press period on the numpad to zoom in and then I'll press three on the numpad to go to the side view. I'll press R to rotate this about here, not flat, just a little bit angled. GZ, drag this up a little bit, just make it so that this corner is a little bit below ground level. Then I'll press tab to go into edit mode, one for vertex select, I'll click this top vertex here, shift S, cursor to selected, then I'll press N to bring up this quick menu over here, go to view, 3D cursor, and then Z, I'll assign to zero here to make that on ground level. Tab back into object mode, right click the cylinder and set origin to 3D cursor, and then also control A, I'll apply the rotation to it. Then I'm gonna go over to the shading tab and I'm going to apply the bark texture to it, but then I'll click new material right here and then let's call it bark underscore burned. Then I'll click this folder here and give bark underscore burned .png to that. All right, then we're gonna apply an array modifier to, um, to have five of these logs coming up from the center here. So shift A, empty plane axis, then I'll click the log, add modifier, array, uncheck relative offset, check object offset, and assign that to empty. Uh, I'm gonna give it a count of five, and 360 degrees divided by five is 72, so I'll take that empty and RZ 72, and that looks perfect. So I'm going to apply that modifier, and then I'll select the empty here, delete that, and we are done with our campfire logs. Okay, we've got everything modeled, so now we just need to export it. So let's start with the campfire logs. I'll click that, and I'm gonna go up here. I'll call it campfire. If you don't have this quick menu open, you can press N. I'm gonna go to item, and then select all of these location parameters and set them to zero. Then I'm going to, well, first I'll press Control A and apply all transforms. Then I'm gonna go up to file, export, GLTF. I'm gonna call this campfire.glb, include limit to selected objects, and I'll have it remember that export setting. Okay, and then I'm going to hide that. Then let's do the same thing for the foliage. Set everything to zero. Call it foliage. Control A, apply all transforms, file, export, GLTF. Uh, let's call it foliage.glb. Okay, perfect, and I'll hide that one. And for the tree, same thing. 
zero location. Let's call it tree. Control A. All transforms. File. Export. GLTF. Tree.glb. It's still included selected objects just because we remembered the export settings. Export. Okay, we're done with Blender. Okay, I've got a brand new Godot 4 project opened up here, and all I've done is just added in this simple first-person controller where I can walk around on this, this plane here with a static body. And uh, no environment or anything, we're just going to use this as the starting point. And uh, I've got my folder of assets here, and I'm going to control click all of the models that we exported, as well as these textures that we haven't used yet. So the smoke, the fire, the sky, the ground, and the ground normal, and then those three models. And I'm going to drag all of those in. Then they all import, and then we can get started. Okay, so now we need to get started putting together our environment elements, and we'll start by making a tree scene for us to use. So I'm going to right-click on tree.glb, and I'll click New Inherited Scene. And here I'm going to click this Tree 2 Mesh Instance, and I'll go over to this Mesh drop-down arrow, and I'll click Make Recursive, or Make, make Unique Recursive, which is going to let us uh, edit some of this imported mesh data, and I'm going to find the surface right here, surface 2 with the pine needles, and I'll click this drop down arrow uh, for the material, and I'll convert it to a shader material, and we're going to put in just a couple lines of shader code here that are going to make it so that the branches kind of um, sway in the wind a little bit, so it just adds a little bit of life to it. So click the material and then click shader here, and here I have a paste bin that I'm just going to copy some lines over from. So I'm going to start with these four uniform lines. So I'll copy those and I'll paste them right here. And you should see a wind drop down appear here then. And then I'll go to noise text, new noise texture 2D. I'm going to click seamless right here. I'll drag this over to one for noise, new fast noise light. Let's give this a frequency of 0 0.005. And then in fractal, I'm going to make it just one octave. And then that should be good for the noise. And then I'll just reset these to be what these are. Uh, and then the rest of these lines, I'm going to copy. And I'm just going to stick that in the vertex function and make sure everything's tabbed over like this. And you can see some of that wind effect taking place. It's a lot more visible the higher up you go on the tree. And I am content with that. So I'm going to save this, tree.tscn. OK, and we are done with the tree. All right, so now we just want to make a similar setup for a foliage scene. So let's go over to foliage.glb, right click that, click new inherited scene. I'll click it down here, press F to center on it and zoom in a little bit. And we're going to go over to the mesh here, click the drop down. We're once again going to do uh, make unique recursive. Then we'll find the surface, go to that material and convert to shader material. And I'll open the shader here. And let's start by copying over those wind properties. So I'll go over, grab these uniforms, copy, go down here, paste there. I'm gonna go back over to the tree tab here and I'm gonna to go to the wind parameters, click that drop down, click copy. Then I'll go back to that material over here, wind for the noise text, then I'll paste that in there and then reset these. Wind strength for the foliage, I'm gonna make 0.2. And uh, let's go back to the tree shader code. I'm going to copy this. I'm not going to copy global vertex. We're going to make some changes to this code. I'll paste that in here. All right, and the changes that we're going to make are first, we're going to get rid of this vec2, and we're going to make this node position world dot xz minus offset. Then down at this bottom line here, we'll get rid of this y parameter, and we'll get rid of this times length vertex xz. Uh, and then the last thing that we're going to do to make sure that it's always blowing in the correct direction and that it can be at any height is we are going to add a comma here up at the end of render mode at the top of this shader. And we're going to add world vertex chords. And then the last thing is this vertex.y here. We're going to add minus node position world dot y so that at any height, it's still going to blow the correct amount. And at any rotation, it is still blowing in the correct direction. OK, so we are done with the foliage now. So I'll save that, foliage.tscn, and we can move on. All right, so next I'm going to make the campfire scene. So I'll right click campfire.glb, new inherited scene, go to the root node, control A. I'm going to add a GPU particles 3D node right here, and I'll call it flames. 
Go to the process material, new particles process material, draw passes, pass one, new quad mesh. And then in there, in the material, I'm gonna give it a new standard material 3D. Then I'll go in there, go into albedo, and I'll drop in fire.png. Okay, then I'm gonna swap tabs, and then back over just so I can see that texture applied. I'm gonna go back into that material, make a few changes here. Transparency, I'll set to alpha. Shading, I'll set to unshaded vertex color. Make sure you've got uses albedo checked. And for sampling, we're gonna set the filter to nearest so that we've got a clean pixel texture. And billboard, we're gonna to set to particle billboard. Okay, and we're done with that. So I'll go into the process material now. Good number of changes to make here. Uh, direction, X I'll set to zero, and then Y I'll set to one. I'm gonna set the spread to five. Gravity, I'm gonna set to zero. Initial velocity, I'll set the minimum to one. Angular velocity, I'll set a range of negative 50 to 50. Linear acceleration, I'll set the minimum to one. And angle, I'll set the max to 360 degrees. I'm gonna take the gizmo here and drag it up here a little bit just so that it's closer to the tip of the firewood. And then over here, scale, I'll set the minimum to two, and then I'm gonna give it a scale curve here. So I'll go in here, and then about one third of the way, I'll right click, add a point, and then drag these endpoints down to zero. All right, that looks pretty good. And then the last thing for this one is we're going to give it a color ramp here. So I'll go in here and click this black color, drag this white all the way up, and I'm going to give it a bright kind of yellow orange color right here. That's pretty good. And then on the right side, I'll click that, give it a bright red color. Okay, I'll drag this in a little bit, whoops. And I'm content with that. I'm just gonna turn the amount up a little bit, bump it up to like 16. Okay, that's good. So now I'm just gonna duplicate the flames and then make the smoke from that. So uh, with flame selected, control D, I'll call this one smoke. And then in the process material, I'll click this arrow here, make a unique recursive. And then same with draw passes, pass one, make unique recursive. Otherwise, these currently share the same resources. So if I edited this one, it would also edit the flames. So uh, pass one, go into that material, go into albedo. And then here we're gonna drag in the smoke.png. Okay. Then we can go back over the process material. For scale, I'm gonna reset all these back to their normal values, there we go. And then for color, I'll reset this back to normal as well, and then give it a new color ramp here. And let's see, I'll click this black color, drag it all the way to be white, and then drag the alpha to zero. Same thing with this one, alpha down to zero. And then I'll add a new point about three fourths of the way. Click that and Bring the alpha about halfway, and I'll drag this left point to be about a third of the way. Okay, and now for the time here, I'm gonna set the lifetime equal to two. And it's moving a little quick, so I'm gonna set the speed scale to be 0.66. And I'm pretty happy with that, so this is our fire scene. So I'll save this, campfire.tscn, and we're done. All right, it's time to start putting some of these assets together. So I'm gonna go back to my world tab over here. I'll delete this placeholder ground and then control A. I'll add a new mesh instance 3D. I'll call this one ground as well. Go to mesh, add a plane mesh. I'll make this fairly large, 100 by 100 meters. And then mesh, create tri-mesh static body so that it collides with the player. Material, new standard material 3D. And for the albedo, let's drag in ground.png, and you can see that it's pretty blurry, so I'm gonna go down here to sampling and set this to nearest. And then we wanna scale this. Uh, uh, because it's 100 by 100 meters, I'm gonna scale this to 50, so that this ends up being about 32 by 32 pixels per meter. And for the normal map, I'll enable this and drag in ground underscore end.png so that this is gonna look like a, a nice bumpy ground when we add lights. Okay, so that's it for the ground. I'll save that. And now we wanna add trees and foliage to the scene. And we could do that by um, you know, adding the scene and then like duplicating it and just hand placing them, but that's gonna be pretty tedious. So we're instead gonna use grid maps. Um, 
So I'll start by creating one for the tree. And first, I'm actually going to add some collision to this tree so that the player can't walk right through the trunk. So on the mesh, I'll control A, add a static body 3D, control A, collision shape 3D. And then for the shape, I'll add a cylinder shape 3D. And I'll just drag this up. And I don't even need to really set this properly just because all I need to do is make sure that the player can't walk through the base of the trunk. So, you know, for our purposes, this is going to be just fine. So I'll save that. And then I'm going to go to scene, export as mesh library. I'll call this tree mesh and save that. And let's do the same thing with foliage. Scene, export as mesh library, foliage mesh. And then I'll go back to my world scene. Control A, add a grid map. Let's call this one trees. And then I'll drag in the tree mesh here in the mesh library. And then cell, I'm gonna uncheck center Y. And for the X and Z here, I'll set this to be one on each. And if I click this mesh here, I can place them left click to place, right click to remove. And yeah, this is just gonna make it easy when we actually design our environment. So there's the trees. Let's do the same thing with the foliage grid map call this one foliage, drag in the foliage mesh, cell, uncheck center Y. For the X and Z here, I'll make it be 0.5. And we can do the same thing here with the foliage. Okay, I'm gonna move the player here just a little bit. And I'm gonna add our campfire as well. Control Shift A, campfire.tscn. And you can see that when loading up, it takes a little bit for it to um, you know, reach its animation loop. And we're gonna fix that really quick by going back to our campfire scene, flames, go to the time, pre-process. I'll just set this to two seconds. And for the smoke, I'll just set this to two seconds as well. So that way when it starts up, it's already run through that much of the animation and you don't see that startup delay. Okay, so that's everything that we need to get started with actually laying out our environment. All right, I'm gonna do one more quick thing with the ground here before we paint our environment. And that's gonna be, I'm gonna go into the ground material, go to this metallic parameter, and I'm gonna turn the specular down to zero just so that it doesn't reflect bright light so easily. Uh, okay, now we are going to actually set up the trees and the foliage here. So I'm gonna select my trees grid map, press seven on the numpad to go to this top view. I don't really wanna see shadows while I'm doing this. So I'm gonna to go to this menu at the top left of the viewport and display unshaded. And then here, if I click this tree option right here, I can just clear that. What I'm gonna do, I've got the campfire in the center of the scene right now. I'm gonna put a couple of trees scattered around and then a thicker ring uh, around that. And so let's see, so one, two, Three, I'll put like five trees kind of around this ring. And then I'll start putting some trees kind of close, but not like intersecting with each other around that. Okay, so that's one ring. And just to kind of thicken it out a little bit, I'm going to put trees uh, kind of between like these windows here between neighboring trees in the ring. And these ones, I'm a little bit more comfortable with them intersecting with the ones in front of them, but you don't want them to inter intersect too much. All right, so that takes care of that. Let's hit the play button and see what this looks like right now. Okay, we don't have the actual environment set up, so it looks pretty bad, but just layout wise, I'm pretty happy with this tree layout. So let's go ahead and click foliage and we can do the same thing here, just kind of scatter these around. You could press S2 to kind of turn them around a little bit. It won't make that big of a difference though. I'm just gonna start putting these around a little randomly throughout here, but I'm gonna try to keep them away from the fire. I don't want them right next to the fire. Okay, and I'm pretty happy with that layout. I'm gonna go back into the normal display here for the time being. And uh, I'm not gonna have a sun in the scene at all, so I'm actually just gonna toggle this preview sunlight right away. But let me hit play just to make sure that I'm happy with how this looks. Yeah, yeah, this is, I think, gonna be a fine layout. All right, so moment of truth, it's time to set up the environment and the settings so that the scene uh, looks a lot better. So I'm gonna start by taking the player and just kind of dragging them so that they're facing the fire so we've got a better kind of judge of how the environment looks on startup. 
And I'm also going to go to project, project settings, make sure you've got advanced settings turned on, display window, and I'm gonna change the resolution so that it's a little bit lower, so it looks a bit more stylized. 320 by 180 is good, and that window is pretty small, so we're gonna go to the override and set that to 1280 by 720, and then take the stretch mode and set it to viewport. And now if I hit play, it renders at a lower resolution, but the environment still looks pretty bad, so we still have quite a few things that we want to add. I'm going to go to the campfire and add an OmniLight 3D to it. And I'm going to set the range to 15. You can play around with this stuff. And I'm going to take the light, kind of make it a more orange color. And currently it's sitting in the ground, so I'll drag it up a little bit so that it's actually in the fire. All right, that's pretty good. And now I'll go to these three dots up here and click Add Environment to Scene. I'll go into that Environment Resource, Sky, click the Sky, and then I'm gonna change the Sky Material to a new Panorama Sky Material, and then go in there, and I'm gonna drag in Sky.png, and then you should be able to see the stars after that. And then the last thing that I'm gonna do in this is I'm gonna enable some fog, go to the light color, drag this down so it's darker, right about there is fine. I'm gonna increase the density a little bit to like 0.04, and uh, currently the fog is blocking out the stars, so we wanna lower the sky effect. I'll set it to 0.85. And this looks a lot better, but it's pretty dark. So I'm just gonna give the player a flashlight so that they can still see the details when they walk up to things. So I'll go to my player scene, control A on the camera 3D and give them a spotlight 3D. And I'll give the flashlight a range of 15 and an angle of 30, save that. Okay, now the player has a flashlight. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something and maybe you can use this environment as a stepping stone to make a better environment of your own. If you like this video, please feel free to give it a like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it a lot. And I'm hoping to make some more of these in the future. Thanks again.